Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for calling my sister irresponsible and banning her from visiting over plan issue. So, here's the deal. I'm 26, and married to my awesome husband, who's 27. We've got this amazing little girl who's 6. Lately, we've been trying to teach her about responsibility. We figured a pet might be too much if something went wrong, so we thought, why not a plant? She was super excited about it, so we went out and got some sweet pea seeds. Our daughter absolutely loved caring for her plant. It was growing like crazy, and she was so into it. We even started calling her Sweet Pea because of how much she adored her little plant. Every day, she'd tell us all about its progress. Then we got some sad news my grandmother passed away. We had to fly out for the funeral, and my sister, who's 22, didn't want to go. She never really knew our grandmother. So I asked her to look after Sweet Pea's plant while we were gone for the week. She agreed, and my daughter even kissed the plant goodbye, asking my sister to take good care of it. My sister assured her she would. When we got back, things took a turn for the worse. My sister had completely forgotten about the plant. She laughed it off saying, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. She brought out the pot, and the plant was in terrible shape, the stem was snapped, and it was wilted. My daughter ran to the car, crying her eyes out. I was furious and yelled at my sister for being irresponsible. She shrugged it off, saying we could just buy another one, but that wasn't the point. We left, and she hasn't apologized since. Since then, I've cut off contact with her and won't let her visit. My parents are telling me I'm being ridiculous and that it's just a plant, but this isn't the first time my sister has done something like this. She always acts like she's still a teenager and I've let it slide in the past, but this time she really hurt my daughter. My daughter has been so sad since the incident and she's even asked us to stop calling her sweet pea, which breaks my heart. So, Reddit, Ate. I hate seeing my daughter like this, but I don't know if I'm overreacting. Hash hash update. After having some time to cool off and read through the comments, I realized I might have overreacted a bit. I shouldn't have left something so important to my daughter in the hands of my sister. Once my daughter had a bit of time to grieve her plant, we talked about plant life cycles. I told her how proud I was of her for taking such good care of her plant, and that sometimes, even with the best care, plants can die. After our talk, she seemed ready to try again. We went to the garden shop, and she picked out new tools, soil, pots, gloves, and a variety of seeds. She's now really excited about growing vegetables and fruits too. As for my sister, I tried to explain why the plant meant so much to my daughter, and how it couldn't just be replaced. Unfortunately, she didn't understand and lectured me about how it was just a plant, and that they die all the time. My parents also texted me, saying I should let it go. I realized they wouldn't change their minds, so I decided to move on. However, I'll never let my sister handle anything valuable, especially if it's my daughter's. I apologized to my daughter about Sweet Pea and we hugged it out. We decided to use the old plant as compost for a new one, so in a way, it's still with us. Now, my daughter is happier than ever. She's named all her new plants, as she has 12 now, including two succulents, and she's taking great care of them. She even asked us to call her Sweet Pea again, which brought tears of joy to my eyes. Thank you to everyone who offered suggestions and helped me see things more clearly. We've also found a new potential plant sitter for the future my husband's co-worker, who has a green thumb just like my daughter. We're even considering setting up an indoor sanctuary for the plants when it gets too cold outside. In the end, everything turned out well. Everyone's happy, the plants are already sprouting, and life has never been better. Story 2 AITA for requiring my friend's partners to contribute to holiday accommodation costs. My friend, M47, and I, F43, had been planning a trip to an island we'd both been dying to visit. We booked a two-bedroom cabin, and because the place is so popular, we had to book and pay 10 months in advance. We split the cost 50-50. Two months before our trip, he started dating someone. As the holiday approached, his new girlfriend was understandably uncomfortable with him going on a trip with me alone. I was given an ultimatum, either she comes or the entire holiday is called off. I didn't say yes immediately because I needed to check with the accommodation due to the island's limited guest policy. My hesitation wasn't well received, they thought I wasn't keen on her coming. Within 24 hours, I confirmed with the accommodation that it was okay for her to come and let them know. A week later, my friend informed me that she had her plane tickets. 
I then asked him if we could discuss rebalancing the accommodation costs now that there were three of us, as it should now be a three-way split. To my surprise, he got angry. He argued that since the accommodation was already paid for, it was wrong and greedy of me to expect money from his girlfriend. He said he was paying for her entire holiday, so it was still just him and me paying, and it was unfair of me to ask for a three-way split. I told him that there were three adults now, so it should be split three ways. If he chose to pay for his girlfriend's share, that was his decision and had nothing to do with me. He said his girlfriend was going to buy me a cocktail as a thank you for the accommodation, but if I insisted on a split, I could forget it and buy my own damn cocktails. A cocktail costs $15, and while I was currently covering half of her accommodation costs, which was around $600, and I didn't think I was being unreasonable asking for her slash them to cover her share of the accommodation. I hadn't even met her yet, but they thought I should cover her costs because it was already paid for. AITA for insisting she pay for her component of the cost. Hash hash update. Thank you everyone for your perspectives. It seems there's a split between those who think everyone should pay equally, those who think a couple sharing a bedroom should be treated as one person cost-wise, and those who think the costs should be split considering shared areas. With this in mind and everything else going on, I called the accommodation to discuss options, then called my friend. I explained that our initial agreement was to split everything equally when it was just the two of us, but now that agreement didn't seem fair. I suggested splitting the cost of the communal areas three ways, but setting a cost per bedroom. I also stated that any food activities, etc., wouldn't be split anymore, and we'd each be responsible for our own expenses. They could decide as a couple how they were paying for themselves. This didn't go down well. He didn't see why he should be out of pocket because I decided to go against our agreement. I stuck to my stance and said I'd be willing to negotiate the accommodation costs, but wouldn't pay half for his girlfriend's activities, dinners, and drinks. He called me a B-word and said I was acting crazy. I told him this holiday wasn't going to work, and I'd spoken to the accommodation to cancel. I informed him that if he still wanted to go, the accommodation would hold the booking for 72 hours. If he confirmed, they'd keep $1,800 and from what he contributed and refund me the rest. If they didn't confirm, I'd get the full refund and forward him his share. He went quiet, then told me I should leave the entire accommodation payment because it wasn't his fault I no longer wanted to go, and I was ruining his holiday with his girlfriend. I told him I was canceling and wouldn't pay for accommodation I wasn't using. I might have been a bit petty when I mentioned he'd still be paying for his girlfriend's costs, just more than expected because I wasn't subsidizing them. I canceled my flights and the accommodation, then emailed him all the details. I'd known him for five years as a friend. Yes, I'd had issues with him before regarding his lack of empathy and selfishness, but his personality seemed to change overnight with his new girlfriend. He wasn't willing to discuss options like before. It was his way or no way. This time, I decided to draw the line. I haven't kept in contact with them, but through mutual friends, I found out they tried to find cheaper accommodation on the island, but let the hold expire without confirming. Everything was booked up and they lost the cabin option. I received the full deposit back and immediately transferred his portion to him. A mutual friend told me my ex-friend was pissed off as he had bought non-refundable slash non-transferable plane tickets without travel insurance, losing about $3,200. He felt I ruined his holiday with his girlfriend and owed him an apology and the cost of the fares. That's not going to happen. As for me, I've booked another holiday to the island, staying in a single apartment by myself, and plan to have an awesome time.